Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America. I'm Walter Zagrevich with Global Vision Ministries, and I will be joined very shortly by missionary Michelle Heimsad, fresh from Haiti. We want to hear about Haiti and getting ready to go to Ukraine. So uh, tune in, uh, share this, and get your friends, your loved ones to join in right now uh, by pressing share, by calling them, texting them, whatever you have to do. Get a hold of your friends and tell them you, they've got to get Get on this broadcast right now. We're going to be praying for needs. We're going to be praying for Haiti. We're going to be praying for Ukraine. And we are going to be praying for uh, the folks in Louisiana, the path of the storm. We're going to be praying for the church in Afghanistan, the situation there, as well as other needs around the world. Just up the hill from uh, where I am, we've got uh, horrific fires. Today we have less smoke um, uh, outside our windows, but God is the same God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just because circumstances or things Things happen does not mean that God changes or his will changes. So welcome, Sister Michelle. Would you greet the people? Praise God. Thank you, Brother Walter, for the opportunity to, to meet today with those prayer warriors that God has called to set aside some time to lift up the needs of this generation. I'm blessed and greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Michelle. And for those of you that have not met Sister Michelle, God has been uh, using her to nations of the world. She has taught in many of our Bible schools, and uh, she just came back from ministry in Haiti. Um, uh, Sister Michelle's uh, dad pastors a church. He and uh, Michelle's mom have also taught in many of our Bible schools, and they have been active in in missions ministry for many, many years. And uh, Sister Michelle, uh, just tell us a little bit before we talk about Haiti, tell us just a little bit about yourself and uh, how, uh, well, you know, we can't hear everything, but God has called you to ministry, as I recall, at an early age. But just tell us a little bit about God's call in your life. Well, I was, I was really young when I first understood that there was such a thing called missions. And um, I guess I say, I like to say I, I became a missionary because of Stalin or because of the USSR and communist system. I read a lot of the books by people who were persecuted for their faith in Jesus. And something about the book struck a chord inside of me. And I dreamed to meet the Jesus that they said was with them in the darkest, deepest dungeon. They said he was close like no other and I just, I don't know, I, I, I had birthed within me a desire to live my life on the extreme and to also lay down my life for Jesus. I saw him as worthy. And um, so when I was um, 20, well, 19 years old, the Soviet Union had already collapsed the previous year. And um, I wasn't able to get to the Soviet Union like I had hoped, but I still went to Russia. So in 93, I went to Russia in the past 28 years, I've been I've been following Jesus wherever he leads, and he's opened so many doors of ministry in a number of different countries. I'm blessed. Praise God. And Sister Michelle, for those uh, watching, they may not know that you have learned and do speak uh, in Russian, and you do a lot of ministry in the former Soviet Union uh, in Russia, in Ukraine, and uh, uh, in, but not just in those countries. Uh, but uh, um, I know that uh, at one point you, 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 you understood the language, you could communicate, but you were a little hesitant to actually speak uh, in, uh, to people behind a pulpit in the Russian language, but we, we, we got caught in situations where we didn't have good translators to help you, and you had to do it, and before you knew it, you, were, you became quite fluent in the language. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, I only lived for two years in Russia full time. And so in that two years, I didn't, I didn't apply myself to learn the language as I should have. So uh, yeah, uh, my Russian wasn't, I didn't feel strong enough to actually use it in a formal capacity. But then somebody, I was sitting on the airplane next to a professor 
an American professor of Russian culture up in the university in Michigan. And he had said to me, he said, the secret to learning a language is actually to find something you're interested in and read. And so I went home and I dug out my Russian Bible and started to read. And I made a commitment to read one chapter every day and just reading through the Bible. I'm on my sixth time now through the Russian Bible. And I never skip a day, never, ever since 1994. So there's where the language came from. Wow. And what a good recommendation to anyone who wants to pick up a new language. Do get the Bible. And, uh, you know, you could even get in some languages, um, two languages. You could get English on one side and Russian or Spanish or another language on the other side. And you could actually cut a check back and forth if you're not sure of what you're reading when you're learning that language. But wonderful. Well, uh, Sister uh, Michelle, you just came back from Haiti. Uh, we have been praying for Haiti. We continue to lift up Haiti. Just tell us a little bit uh, about Haiti and how we should be praying for Haiti right now. Well, it was kind of interesting how I ended up going to Haiti right on the same weekend that the earthquake and then the hurricane was, was predicted. So um, I didn't plan it that way. God planned it that way. And I had already had my tickets and everything was lined up. But previous to the trip, I felt such a great spiritual opposition. And it was like, it was almost strong enough to make me cancel the trip for no reason, except I could feel the spiritual oppression or the, the opposition. And I kept searching my heart about what am I supposed to go? Am I not supposed to go? I surely don't need to go if, if you don't want me to go but I felt like I was supposed to go. And so I went ahead and moved forward with the trip. And then the day before I was to fly in, the earthquake, that 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit. And um, it, was, it was kind of like, wow, really? Like, <laughs> I remember their last earthquake and it was a mess. And, and so, and then they said, and not only that, but they're expecting this hurricane to hit over the weekend, Sunday night, Monday. And so that's when I was literally flying in on Sunday evening, Monday morning, then flying on from Port-au-Prince to Jeremy, where I was minister, going to minister. And um, so I was, it was just kind of funny because I, I guess I had dealt with the confusion I felt in the spiritual realm before the trip or before it actually hit any of the confusion, the greater confusion. And so when the earthquake hit, it was just like, oh, bring it on. I, I don't know what this is, but I, I trust you, God. And then when the hurricane was projected, it was like, well, okay, I guess I'll learn what a hurricane is or not. So um, I flew in and there was no, I don't think the earthquake was close enough to Port-au-Prince to cause any damage. And then where I was flying onto in Jeremy on the coast, um, they were about 50 miles away from the part, I, I, what's it called? The, the epicenter. The epicenter, yeah. And so um, they they had, they, they got, about the people I was talking to said it shook for about 40 seconds. And um, it felt like you were standing on jello. They said, you think you have concrete or a solid foundation under your feet. You have nothing under your feet. And it feels like the earth is just going to open up and swallow you. That was the testimony that I heard from, from one of the brothers there. But um, um, the people in Jeremy themselves, I, I, they were very hit. They hit very hard the previous earthquake and great devastation. So maybe everything that could be shaken was mostly shaken. The greatest damage in the in the city there was just the Catholic church. Its roof had imploded on it. So it's very, I don't know if it's repairable or not, but it's its rubble is bursting out of the doors and the windows. And um the, the bridge, the only access to Jeremy by land is 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 it was a suspension bridge. And this is number of suspension um pillars popped or broke or snapped open. So and it 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 dropped almost a foot in the middle of the bridge so it's unpassable so no no supplies can come in and out now of jeremy except by foot or by uh like the motorcycle and so um uh, they really need a miracle where that bridge is concerned except i did hear that the maybe the u.s army what is it corps of engineers is looking at maybe helping them i don't know i saw that today so that's a hope that if they can get that bridge i don't know how many months it would take to redo a bridge of that size because the river is large but that's that's a need is to get transportation in. But Jeremy wasn't hit as hard as the uh, the countryside. Many of the villages out there, there was I don't know how many thousand they've they've counted dead so far. But a lot of gangs are controlling the roads and so making convoys 
giving in great difficulty trying to get needed supplies into the people. So that's a definite prayer need, just that the gangs so, will cooperate. So not only is it difficult because of the uh, unnavigable bridge and the difficulty of even having to walk or go on a, on a motorcycle to get there, but you have uh, gangs that are controlling roads and uh, basically it's very dangerous because you've got these people um, assaulting uh, people coming through the road and, and robbing them. So that so we definitely need, want to pray for that. But you shared something with me, um, how that because of the fear of being inside buildings, you ended up having many meetings outside which turned out to be uh, a blessing in that more people were able to hear the gospel and more people were reached by virtue of the fact that the meetings were outside rather than uh, smaller meetings inside. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, prior, prior to the earthquake or any of that, I was, uh, they were planning some women's, women's seminars for me on the the Friday, Saturday, I don't know, Thursday, Friday, I don't know what evenings they were working on, but they were going to do several days of women's meetings, three days. And um, when I heard that, I was excited because I do love women's ministry, but I was also a little bit sad. I thought, well, I mean, I know I'm only going to be there for a week or so, 10 days total with travel, but I thought it would be really nice to have access to more people than just women, just because there's, there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of men. I mean, there's a lot of need in Haiti. And I thought uh, women's meetings is great, but I would love more. And I told them and they said, I don't know, we'll see. It's hard, you know, on short notice to arrange things, but there is a good women's group that we can access to who we could actually do something with. But lo and behold, the earthquake hit and all of a sudden the women's meetings were forgotten and the church buildings, even the ones that weren't so um, like the Catholic church was the one that was irrevocably or <laughs> hopelessly damaged. But the other churches, they're still standing, but they were some considerable cracks infrastructure cracks and they were nobody was willing to go inside the churches and the aftershocks were continuing even as we were there and so um they they were unwilling to have meetings in the church and they said oh, the other option is outside and so it, it ended up just open air outreach services we got some some speakers and and we actually had to work with the local gangs we went in and we went into the, the one of the worst slums in the area and told them what we wanted to do, and we constant we re reached the the main the main gangsters in charge of that area, and they agreed that we could host that they would help us host this uh, outreach. They agreed to sweep the field for us and to um to get us a stage set up, small stage, <laughs> um to get some um um security guys they had all their the guys standing there around around the area and they were they were providing very good crowd control if anybody even even looked like he was going to cause trouble they would drag him out so so we had the full security of the gangs on our side and um and a really good hundreds of people got to hear instead of just a few a little women's group so um so i was really blessed and the kids especially lots and lots and lots of kids and we we had a second night as well and we also were able to go into the prison and um and uh, do a, a really nice meal for them with fried chicken and rice and beans and salads and drink. And um, also two services there in the prison. So God really opened doors and people were hungry to hear. I mean, when the world is shaking around you and you're fear for your life, it's, it's a really good time to be there and on the ground and able to speak hope, the only hope that there is. Amen. And that hope is in Jesus Christ. And uh, Sister Michelle, let's pray for Haiti right now before we go any further. And you have just been there. Perhaps you could lead us in this prayer as we pray for the church there, as we pray for the needs there. And uh, uh, it, it, would you lead us that? And as we pray for Haiti, let's go into prayer for Louisiana. Uh, and not just Louisiana, obviously the storm is moving through in other directions, but particularly Louisiana uh, has been hit hard. And uh, you've just come from a situation where you've seen devastation, a much poorer country, of course. You've seen devastation there, the effects not only of a uh, uh, of an earthquake and aftershocks, but uh, 
perhaps some damage from the hurricane, maybe not as severe as expected. But would you pray, lead us in that prayer right now. And folks, let's agree with Sister Michelle and pray for uh, these folks that have just heard the gospel of Jesus Christ there in uh, Haiti, for those missionaries who are working there, for the churches, for the body of Christ there, and for those who have uh, suffered losses, loved ones that perished and uh, they've lost homes, they've lost uh, many things, but particularly loved ones and those that are injured. Sister Michelle, would you pray right now and we'll agree with you. Amen. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for this opportunity that we have to lift up our brothers and our sisters who are in need. Lord, we do lift up Haiti to you as they're trying to clean up the fallout from this earthquake and the damage that was done in addition to all of the political instability in that land, Lord. We just ask your mercy upon those people. Lord, they've been through a lot and there's not much on the horizon in terms of hope for a better life, Lord. But the truth is the only better life that there really is, is in Jesus Christ. And we just ask you, Lord, that you would reveal yourself in a real and a personal way to the people of Haiti. Lord, that you would strengthen the hands of those who are laboring there in ministry, that you would open the door for help to come in that's needed in a timely manner, Lord, that those who are crying out to you would have direct and miraculous answers to prayer, that you would show yourself strong on their behalf, Lord, that you would show them that you're not limited to a, an ideal political structure or ideal conditions, that you are God of the impossible. You're the God who brings us, your people, up to the edge of the Red Sea, and you hem us in with mountains and impossible insurmountable odds lord you bring a way where there is no way even when pharaoh's army is prancing behind us with his chariots and his horsemen lord you part the waters of the red sea and you bring your people through on the dry ground and we we can know you like this if we'll just reach out and touch the hem of your garment if we'll call out to you in our time of need if we will look to you eyes on you, Lord, instead of cursing ourselves by looking to men who really cannot do much when it's all said and done. You are God of the impossible, and the things that are impossible with men are possible with you, Lord. So we lift up Haiti to you. We lift up the ministries working there. We ask you to give them one heart and one way, to give them unity, Lord, that they can actually work together for good, in Jesus' name and for the sake of your kingdom, that your gospel truth would be proclaimed in this time, Lord, that it wouldn't be forgotten, the hope that we have in Jesus as people are trying to bring physical hope in things like clothes and food and water, but that the, the hope that we have in Christ Jesus would be proclaimed and that people would have ears to hear and that there would be a transformation in that land from the inside out, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for this. We also, Lord, we lift up the Louisiana, the area that's been affected by this hurricane. And as this, this storm is moving on into inland, Lord, that, that the people who are looking at it coming would realize that, that they do have authority in the name of Jesus over the storm and over the damage that can be done. Just like when I was in Haiti and this this hurricane grace was not able to hit like it would have hit. Lord, it became a tropical depression and then it dissipated and it did no damage at all. And so I thank you for that, Lord, that we can look at the storm in the face and say, yeah, but your power is limited. Your power is limited to what God allows. And if he says no, then you can't bring destruction in this place. So Lord God, that your people would take the authority that you've given to us in the name of Jesus and speak peace to the storm, whether it's a physical storm or a spiritual storm, Lord, an emotional storm, Lord, you are big enough. And we thank you, Lord God, for making a way where there is no way. You are the way. And we thank you that we can know you our way. We can know you personally, Lord, in a real and a living way in our daily lives, Lord. In Louisiana, Lord, as they've been devastated and who knows the extent of the damage that you would meet people with personal testimonies of salvation as they cry out when it's impossible. You you still are the door. You open the door. You are the door, Lord. Nobody can close the door that you've opened. 
I thank you, Lord, for your provision for those who reach out to you, that they would find you there sufficient in every situation. In the name of Jesus, you are the God of gods and the King of kings, and we declare your lordship and your authority. We thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to join you in the work that you're doing in this generation. Maybe we would rather the circumstances would be some other way, but you actually use these circumstances and work everything together for good for those that you've called and for those who love you, Lord. The question is, do we love you? Have you called us? Are we responding to you? Lord, are we willing to forsake all and follow you? Are we trying to cling desperately to all of our things while those things blow away in the wind? Lord God, I ask that you would wake up your church, that you would wake up your people, and that you would give a chance, a second chance, Lord, to hear your voice, to respond to you, to receive you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against the principalities and rulers of darkness that are trying to attack to God's people, that are, uh, that are working against the plans and purposes of God in the United States of America, in Afghanistan, in uh, Haiti, uh, in other parts of the world. And Lord, we come against the, the, the witchcraft, and we break the curse of witchcraft over Haiti. We break Break the curse of Satan over that nation, and we set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. Him whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Lord Jesus, may your name arise. May your name be glorified in the midst of the rubble. May the church arise strong and mighty in you, in the nation of Haiti, in the Dominican Republic, just next door. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that that you're, the, the church would arise, that you would arise through the church, offering hope and, and, and salvation to people. For Lord, we all need Christ. So Father, we speak blessing on the missionaries, blessing on the church leaders, blessing on your body there in Haiti, praying that you would use them, that you would meet their needs. Lord, this uh, bridge that needs to be rebuilt, uh, may it be rebuilt quickly, uh, Lord, we pray that the supplies needed in Jeremy and other places would reach their destinations without these gangs interfering. Father, we pray that uh, the corruption would be removed from that nation. We pray that uh, uh, liberty and justice and freedom and, uh, uh, and repentance would come into the hearts of those who seek to do evil, who seek to take advantage of this and other similar situations there. And Father, we pray for justice. We pray for your intervention in that nation. We say your kingdom come, your will be done in Haiti, in the, the entire island, and not only in Haiti, but Dominican Republic and throughout the Caribbean. Lord, just not far from there in Cuba, where there is persecution for the church. We pray for the pastors. We pray for your body, the that they would be strong in this hour of test, in this hour of trials. Father, we pray your protection upon them. They've also uh, been uh, uh, covered by storm after storm. Lord, we pray for them too, that you would meet their needs uh, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we do pray for our brothers and sisters in the Louisiana area and other areas, and we take authority over what remains of the storm and we command it to dissipate. We command the winds to cease in the name of Jesus, and we pray pray for the protection of your people. We pray for the uh, first responders, those that are going out there uh, to save people, to rescue people. We pray for those that are operating the levees. We pray for the electrical grid to come back on so that they could uh, have pumps uh, functioning to get that water out of there. Father, we pray for all those people who have lost and who are in fear of uh, dying right now, that they would get to know you as their Savior and as their hope. And Lord God, we pray that their needs would be met in this hour in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. And Father, we want to lift up Afghanistan right now. Afghanistan has been on the news, but Lord God, we pray for your people. We pray for the church. We pray for the persecuted church in Afghanistan. We pray that you would put a shield of protection upon them. We pray that you would use them, that you would give them boldness despite the circumstances to preach Christ crucified and resurrected from the dead. And Lord God, we pray that you would uh, appear to Taliban leaders, to mullahs, to, uh, to ISIS people, that you would appear, that they would come to repentance, that they would come to a confrontation with you, Lord Jesus, where they would repent and receive Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their Savior, as their Lord and Master. So Father, we pray for Afghanistan. We pray for the church in Afghanistan, and we send your word to your church there. Protect them, keep them, use them, meet their needs, oh God, in Jesus' name. Provide safe passage to those that need to move from place to place right now. Father, we pray for the uh, uh, the remaining military, the United States and allies that are there, that you would protect them, that you would guide them, that you would keep them. And Lord, we pray that any that still need to get out would be safely um, uh, removed from there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Sister Michelle, I know that you're getting ready to go to Ukraine, and, uh, and we want to pray for you. We want to pray for Ukraine. But um, before we do that, just tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing in Ukraine. And um, I know that you've been there many times, and you're going to be ministering in various parts of that uh, country. And perhaps you've got something on your heart that's just burning that you want to share with uh, uh, the folks out there. Please. Well, the invitation on this trip is for two different Bible schools, missionary Bible schools, one in Lviv and one in Ternopil. So I'll be going to both of those schools one week each. And then I have three weekends as well on either end on the beginning, middle and end of those of those schools. So I'll, I'll be able to do ministry on the weekends in various churches and areas in the in the vicinity. So I'm um, looking forward to a blessed and full time there of uh, ministry and and favor of the Lord is my prayer. And um, that God would just continue to raise up laborers. The uh, I feel that the Slavic church. Um, Ukraine and Russia and other countries where they've had the word of God as a foundation. I feel like they're they're singularly equipped to do God's will, to do God's work in this generation. A lot of Christians maybe have a desire to serve, but they don't have a foundation in, in biblical truth. And I feel that the Ukrainians, the Russians, the Slavic people, they do, they have spent time to apply themselves to the word of God and um, maybe in the previous years, they haven't had much of an evangelical outlook, but God has been giving that to them as they're, as they're learning to reach outside of their own little church box and to see what God actually would have for them to do in the nations. And I, I just feel it, it's a privilege to be a part of God equipping them to be ready to go, to go beyond what they can do themselves and to see what God will do with them next. Amen. Praise God. So we definitely want to pray for Sister Michelle. We know that uh, travel at the present moment is a lot more complicated than it was prior to COVID, but God always makes a way. And we praise God for uh, your obedience to God's call and to go into difficult places, even in the midst of uh, very difficult circumstances, as was in Haiti, but it's not just in Haiti. Uh, things happen all over the world, and um, uh, so we praise God for your ministry. We will pray for you, and we will pray on this broadcast, and let's continue to pray for Ukraine. Um, after what happened in Afghanistan, there's, of course, uh, uh, a disconcerting uh, feeling in nations around the world that we're looking to the United States for guidance, for a certain level of protection and standing with them that now they are questioning because of what they just saw happen in Afghanistan. And this goes for Taiwan, I'm certain. And, uh, and of course, in Ukraine, where they still have uh, uh, an active, uh, somewhat active war on the Eastern Front. 
and uh, they've got uh, uh, they've got a lot of challenges there with the economies uh, with the economy and COVID. And yet, it is in Ukraine that we've seen God raise up many pastors, many leaders, many of whom are serving in Russia and are serving all over the former Soviet Union and even here in the United States. <laughs> uh, and uh, so um, we 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 know that God has a plan and none of this has taken God by surprise. Uh, it may not have been what we uh, anticipated or how we anticipated things to develop or happen, but God always has a plan in every situation. And uh, uh, we want to continue to pray for God's will to come forth in our lives in, in situations around the world. And uh, Sister Michelle, uh, uh, I, I'm talking and talking here, but we want to pray for you. But would you, maybe you have got something you wanted to share yet? Yeah, I, I just found it interesting when uh, when the, the the war broke out, what was it, seven, eight years ago in, on the, um, the, eastern, the eastern side of Ukraine. And there was a lot of chaos and confusion and brother against brother. Families were split right down the middle with Russia leanings or Ukrainian leanings. Or there was just so much turmoil and trauma. And a lot of people, they, they perished in the, in the fighting. But what I see that God actually did from that is he opened doors. He uses the chaos for his purposes to rearrange people because we get so comfortable in our little, in our little, our boxes that we create our little our little nests that we make for ourselves and we don't ever plan to move and then god it's almost like you can see in the book of acts he would he would rile up a persecution and the and the church would scatter to the ends of the earth with his gospel and that's kind of what happened is the church on the eastern side of ukraine many of those believers were forced from their homes with the separatists and the and the the fighting and um and they, they had to flee, and where they fled was to the other side of Ukraine. And they fled onto that side of Ukraine where there was a big uh, bastion of, of Pentecostal church, but that Pentecostal church was not what I would call evangelical like it was on the, the eastern side of Ukraine. And so these people that were a little bit free on the, on the eastern side of Ukraine in their faith and willing to testify to what Jesus was doing and could do, they ended up on the other side of Ukraine. And and really made a splash in, in their entrance there because the church wasn't used to these people that <laughs> that came from the other side and they never really had much interaction. And so now these people are, have gone over there and that's how I ended up having access to the Western, the Western Ukraine. And um, because of that, I've had access to Bible schools over there. Because of that, I've ended up in, in Portland and Seattle areas. Uh, I've ended up throughout the, the Slavic community in the US all thanks to Putin. <laughs> Or thanks to this unrest, because if it weren't for that, they never would have moved and I never would have had access. God knows what he does. He does work in amazing, amazing, mysterious ways. And he works his, his purposes for good. He'll wreck our little setup, our little happily ever after scenario, because he's got something bigger in mind. I mean, you can you can take take courage and and take comfort in the fact that when things don't go your way, just take a moment and look up, acknowledge him. Because he's, he's doing something that's outside of what you would have done, but how much bigger he is than you can even fathom or imagine. And if you just give him a space in your life, he wants to do more. He wants to do more with you, but you cling too tightly to what you've got. He wants to, he wants to break through for you. And I, I'll watch him do it in Ukraine. And I'll watch him do it in me. Praise God. And you know, uh, I think uh, what we can draw from that is when there is uh, opposition or confusion or a situation arises, we can look at it as a wall and as the end, or we can look at it as God rearranging things and opening up new doors and new opportunities. And uh, the Bible clearly tells us that God will not allow us to be tested above what we are able, but in every situation like that, in every test, in every trial, he will make a way out. He will provide a door. 
And it's not just to escape that uh, trial, but that door may be to a new ministry, a new level of ministry, a new area of ministry. And so uh, we get discomforted because uh, we've entered in, uh, we enter into an, uh, an unknown uh, territory where we're out of our comfort zone. And yet uh, that's when we begin to realize that our reliance is on God and not on our ability. And we can easily start uh, getting into a rut or getting into a habit of just, well, I'll just do a little of this, a little of that, when God has something greater and we just need to step through that door. So we can uh, look at opposition, we can look at problems and just uh, uh, fold up our tent and go home, or we can just expand and we can do more for God. And that's what I'm hearing from Sister Michelle, that uh, these uh, conflicts, these issues have actually, though they were meant for evil, God turned them around to open new doors and to cause uh, a new move of God in parts of the world. So praise God for that. Um, so let's pray for Sister Michelle. And let's pray for Ukraine. Uh, you're hitting uh, over there just very shortly, like in a few days, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you're, you're mixed my trips. In, in a few days, I head to Portland. And I've got a week in Portland, and then I have a week in Sacramento. And then I'm home for a week or so, and then I head to Ukraine. So yeah, I got I got <laughs> I've got okay. September before I go I go in the first of October to Ukraine. Okay, so well, it's pretty close. We're about a month away here. Uh, uh, so here. it'll be here. And it's good to go ahead and pray because there's a lot in between here then and now that we can just pray that God will God will continue to to bring peace and stability and 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 His purposes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Michelle. We pray for her upcoming ministry uh, in uh, the West Coast of the United States and then in Ukraine. And Father, we thank you for her obedience to you. And Lord, we pray for health. We pray for strength. We pray for provision. And we pray that you would anoint her and use her mightily to inspire others to answer the call of uh, ministry, the call to missionary service, and to whatever call you have placed upon their lives. Father, use Michelle, not only here, but there and wherever you send her. So, Father, we pray as uh, she goes forth in the name of the Lord that you would guide her, protect her, use her, and Lord, inspire others through her testimony to get out there and do more for you, and to answer the call to missions and to serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we uh, do with Ukraine. Lord, we thank you yes. that you are in control. You said all things are of you and for you and through you and to you, Lord. We thank you that there is nothing that catches you off guard, even when the political fallout seems so wrong and it seems so... It seems so frustrating, Lord, things that are taking place politically and in our lives, Lord. It's so easy to get all in a, in a lather about this, but if only we would look up and say, God, what are you doing? Show me what you're doing. Reveal your way to me so that I can join you in what you're wanting to do in this situation. Lord, in Jesus' name, that we would have the courage, that we would be a Daniel. We would be an Esther for such a time as this. I'm sure Esther would have preferred to not be stuck in the king's, in the king's palace. But you had her there for your purposes. And Mordecai, he, he understood that. He said, who knows whether you're come to the kingdom for such a time as this. But if you hold your peace, then God will bring deliverance from another, from another place. Because God is going to deliver his people. But you and your father's house will be destroyed. So, Lord God, that we would not miss our opportunity, Lord, to shine for you, not miss our opportunity to lay down our lives for you, because that's what we're called to do. We're called to take up our cross, to deny ourselves and to follow after you. And that's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. Lord, you are worthy. And my prayer is that we would see you as you are. We would see you as worthy that you would shine so brightly, that you would outshine everything in this world that seems so desperately important to us in our physical lives, Lord, that we would 
that the things of this world would grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace, Lord, that you would be glorified, that we could see you, that we could recognize you as you walk beside us, as you walk on the storm, Lord, that we could recognize you on the road to Emmaus when we're full of confusion and doubts and disillusionment and disappointment. Those two guys walking down that road didn't know that it was Jesus, the risen Christ, walking beside them, asking them these interview questions, saying, why are you guys so sad? Why? What, what's wrong? What are you talking about? And they, they went on to explain, what are you, some kind of stranger? You didn't hear what happened? <laughs> They were talking to the risen Christ and how blind they were. Lord, it's the same true today with your church. We're so blind and we have the risen Christ. You're right here beside us, inside of us. If we've actually accepted you, received you, we have the power as the sons of God, Lord, to do what you've called us to do and what are we waiting for? Lord, I ask that you would wake up your church, that you would quicken us with might by your spirit in our inner man, that your word would be alive in us and that we wouldn't live for things that will never satisfy. That we would not waste our effort and our strength on things that will never satisfy, things that are so temporal, so temporary, Lord, but that our eyes would be on you and that you would be glorified. Lord, this is our prayer. I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name to reveal yourself to your church, to wake up your people, Lord. The time is short, we do not know how much time we have, but time is short. The devil knows his time is short. That's why he's gone out with a vengeance, doing everything he can, Lord, but he is eternally defeated. And if we understood his position and our position, what could stop us, Lord? Open our eyes. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord, your word says that we should take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And this word here, withstanding, is not uh, just folding up our tent and hiding, but no, aggressively, actively uh, just standing our ground and standing against the attacks of the enemy. And I believe we need to go beyond standing and we need to go into the enemy's territory and, and <laughs> take out and, and take away his captives, meaning uh, to, uh, preach the gospel and and save the lost, get him out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And Sister Michelle, the reason you had all that opposition is because the devil uh, did not want you to bring people to Christ there in Haiti. And that's what happens. We go to do the work of God. Uh, I tell you, there's that old saying, nobody kicks an old, uh, the old uh, the dead dog. Well, why? Because he's dead. Well, if you do nothing, nobody's going to bother you. Nobody's going to criticize you. Nobody's going to attack you, but you begin to do things for God, and you're going to stir up the uh, the devil to, against you, and that's just a confirmation you're doing God's will and God's work. So uh, just keep moving forward and keep uh, uh, obeying God. God is using you, and, and I believe that uh, uh, you're a great testimony to many, uh, not just uh, the young ladies out there, but to men and women and, uh, and young people all over the world, because uh, uh, it is not difficult. Uh, it is difficult to go to many nations uh, as a male, much more complicated and difficult for a, uh, for a woman. And yet you have trusted God. You have uh, gone to these uh, uh, faraway places, and uh, uh, and yet you are a testimony how God led you, and you've been obedient to God, and God has used you in, in, in situations you've never expected, perhaps, when you first stepped out into the mission field. Is that right? That's true. <laughs> So uh, what can you say to people out there? Maybe there's a young woman out there listening and say, you know, I'm, I'm a girl. What can I do? I mean, I, you know, uh, how, how, what do I do? You know, I feel God wanted me to get involved and do missions work. What do I do? What do you say to them? Well, the, the safest place to hide is in Christ. And if you're hidden in Christ and it's no longer you who live, then Jesus is certainly not afraid to go anywhere. 
but um, I, I do, I, I have in the past had some difficulties because I'm a woman um, in some churches where it's not, uh, yeah, they, they take the Bible pretty literally that a woman is to be silent. And so there's not much room for me to do anything but to be silent, except God's word cannot be shut up and the donkey can speak it and the rocks will cry out. So, so it's, 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 it's a good, it's a good humbling opportunity to just get dead, to get out of God's way so that he can shine and he can be glorified. If there's no rebellion in me, if there's no anger or offense or bitterness in me, then Jesus truly has free reign. I remember one time I was really upset with God because I was having a hard time in a pretty legalistic church. And I was complaining to him and saying, God, why did you make me a woman? If you made me a man, then I would have been, I could just come in here, walk in like a normal person and serve like a normal person. Here it is. You know, I, I have to jump hoops and I have to contort into all forms of, 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 of compliance, trying to, to even have a little bit of space and, and God just straight out spoke to me. And he said, if you were a man, you wouldn't have to trust me like you trust me as a woman. The man could walk in here and think he doesn't need me. You need me and you know you need me. So I've learned that it's not bad to need God and to know that I need him. And the more I rely on him, the more, the more I see his power. That's what Paul understood in 2 Corinthians 12 when he said, when I'm weak then I'm strong. He said, so I'm going to rejoice in my infirmities and my weaknesses and my troubles and my persecutions in all of these things. I'm going to rejoice because he says, because the power of Christ in my weakness is made perfect. He said, I want the power of Christ to rest upon me. And if we truly want the power of Christ, not the power of our own selves, the power of our own ability or our own, our own access access some um, potential because I'm this because I'm that we have our list of reasons why people should accept us if we have no reason that they should accept us if we have no even standing because of our, our circumstance our situation that's the that's the ultimate and optimal opportunity for Jesus to just shine bright because he he didn't come to earth as something special he had no form or comeliness the Bible says that people should desire him when they looked at him they turned away their faces and so if that's what God has told me straight out. He said, if, if you were something, if you looked like something, you might think you're something. He said, but because I became a zero, he became an absolute zero to walk on this earth. He didn't choose a palace to live in. He chose to be born of a virgin, which is a pretty big reproach in those days. How do you explain how you're pregnant when you haven't been messing around? Jesus took that way. He took the way of reproach. He took the way of shame. He took the way of confusion. He took the way of pain and suffering. He chose that way when he didn't have to choose. And here we are set with the same choice. What way do we choose? Do we choose the easy way, the broad way, or do we choose the narrow way and walk with him there? Because if we'll walk with him on the narrow way, that way leads to life. We can actually see the life of Christ manifested in us. And, and, and the world can stop their mouths because there's nothing to say when Jesus speaks to them. There's nothing to say. Every knee bows to him and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And if we get ourselves out of the way, so I can say maybe it's easier to be a woman because I don't look like anything, but I have the mighty God lives in me. So I'm quite the special forces for Jesus. So you're not expected, but God lives in this temple and he fills this temple and, and he speaks through this like the bush that Moses saw burning and it wasn't consumed. We can be the bush that burns and is not consumed and God will speak to people out of us if we give him space. Praise God, praise God. Very powerful, powerful words and testimony and encouragement. And uh, we, we, we are very encouraged by what you are doing. You're a great example to many, many others. You've gone where many would not dare to go. And you've gone and ministered in various parts of Africa. You do that on a regular basis. You've gone to, uh, of course, the former Soviet Union on many occasions and other countries. So uh, we, uh, we honor and respect that commitment that you have. And we know your, your younger sister has also served as a missionary in Japan for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, just another powerful 
testimony. And not only in Japan, she's joined you uh, in on some of your uh, uh, Russian Ukraine trips as well, hasn't she? She's been on a number of trips with us. She spent 15 years in Japan and and um, God then started to open doors for her to go along with me on my, my dad sometimes to different to Africa, I think seven times and to Russia five times and to Ukraine and Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan and and uh, Poland and Ukraine and Armenia. And she she was able to go a number of places. Ecuador as well. So, yeah, God, God is good to open doors. Praise God. That is so wonderful. And uh, before we close, we want to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus if they don't know him yet. Would you invite people that may not know Christ as their Savior to receive him and then lead him in a prayer receiving Jesus Christ? Excuse me. Amen. Well, there is a Savior and his name is Jesus. He created us for his glory and he's He's standing at the door and he's knocking. I know he was speaking that when he said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He was speaking to the church. And I think a lot of people in the church these days haven't met the living Christ. Maybe they have an idea of who he is or who he was or who he should be, but they have offenses. They have anger. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've got a fence in your heart because God didn't do what you thought he should have done. Or maybe you have questions in your mind because God just doesn't make sense to you. And maybe you have just a hard heart and you've already made up your mind and you think God's not, God's nothing to me. I want to do it myself. Or maybe you've got sin and bondage in your life and you you've tried to break free, but you can't. It doesn't really matter your situation if you have a Bible, then you can open your Bible to Psalm 107. He gives us four specific and clear examples of people who were in troubled situations, people who were lonely and lost, but they cried unto God in their trouble and he delivered them. People who were bound up in chains of affliction because of their sin and their rebellion, people who refused to obey God and they did what? They called unto God, they cried unto God in their trouble. And he saved them. He delivered them. People who were drawing near to death in their in their sickness and in their desperation because of their own stupid choices. And they cried to God in their infirmity and he delivered them. And then people who were just living lives, knowing the works of God, but God himself called and raised up a storm until they were at their wits end, staggering as a drunken man. And then they cried unto God and he delivered them and he brought them into their desired haven. The same God of yesterday is the God of today, and he's the God of forever, and he calls each and every one of us, regardless of our circumstance, regardless of our position, our rebellion, our pride, our sin, our shame, our loneliness, our lostness. He calls us to know his voice and to respond to him. He says, today is the day of salvation, and do not receive my grace in vain. So in Jesus' name, if that's you, if you're any one of those people, you have questions because God doesn't make sense or you're mad at him because he didn't do what you thought he should do or you're stuck in sin and you don't feel worthy. I tell you, none of us are worthy. None of us can come to him because we're somehow good enough to be received by him. He alone is worthy and keep that keep that as your, 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 your total confession. I'm not worthy and I'll never be worthy, but Jesus is worthy and he placed his worth upon me. My worth is in him. My life is in him. My righteousness is in him. My wisdom and my sanctification and my redemption is in him. He's all I've got. He's all you have. No matter if you think you don't need him or you think you've been there, done that, tried that, and it didn't work out. It doesn't matter your circumstance and it doesn't matter where you are. He comes to us where we are. All of the other religions in the world are trying to somehow attain to God. Christianity is the one religion where Jesus came down to us. He is our way and the only way. And it's only through his blood and his redemption, his sacrifice that paid the price in full for our sin and our bondage and our curse. He took it all upon himself so that we could be healed, so that we could be free, so that we could be saved. And I I would pray today. And if you want to pray along with me, We'll give you time to pray because I believe that each one of us, we need to draw nigh to God. We need to wash our hands. We need to sanctify our hearts, to circumcise our hearts, to pull away the sin and the dross and the, and the masks that we so easily hide beneath. 
and let the light of Jesus Christ shine in. The Bible says that this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world and men loved darkness rather than light. It's not how bad we are and that's, that's why we can't come in or how good we are and that's why we can. It's nothing to do with us. It's Jesus Christ and his call. It's his redemption plan. And so if you want to pray, if you want to reconcile your life to God today, you pray along with me from your heart in Jesus name. We say to him, Father, in Jesus name, we come to you. We need you. Forgive us, God. Forgive us for trying to live our lives in our own strength. Forgive us for making excuses for our sin, for our laziness, for our lies, for our deviance. Forgive us, Lord God, for our rebellion to you and our disobedience. We have sinned, we are depraved, and we are broken, and we are lost, and we are alone. We have no hope apart from you. You are the only hope, the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Lord, in Jesus' name, shine your light into the darkness of my heart. I need you. Wash me clean. Set me free. Forgive my sins. Be my God, my Lord, my master, my savior, my healer, and my friend. Forgive me for looking somewhere else, trying to make my own way, or looking for hope where there is no hope. Forgive me, God, for sitting on a stolen throne and thinking I can somehow control my destiny. That's a lie. Lord, in Jesus' name, open my eyes, the eyes of my understanding. Set me free. Break the chains. I want to be free. Lord God, it's my desire to walk in the freedom that you purchased for me at Calvary. I want to walk in your way. I want to walk in your truth, and I want to walk in your life. In Jesus' name, Lord, be glorified. Here's my life. I lay it down, and I ask you to fill me up. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your life and your light and your lordship, Lord God, that your abundance, your power would be my strength, Lord, that your grace would be sufficient in every circumstance and that, Lord, I would see your strength perfected in my weakness. Lord, that the power of Christ would rest upon me, that I would be your servant, your ambassador, that I would serve you, that I would walk after you every day of my life with every beat of my heart, with every breath in my lungs. You are worthy, Lord God, and I give you myself. I give you me. I belong to you from this day forward, and I declare that Satan has no more space in me. His demons have no more power over me. I break every chain, and I break the curse. I reconcile myself to God by faith in the blood of Jesus. I am washed. I am clean. I am free in Jesus' name, and Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. 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 And we uh, want to encourage you, if you pray this prayer, do three things every day. Talk to God. Prayer is talking with God. Number two, allow him to talk to you. How? By reading his word, the Bible. You don't know where to start? Go to the fourth book of the New Testament, the gospel according to St. John. And three, Tell others you are now a follower of Jesus and find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching where uh, a church where people pray for one another, and you will grow, you will be encouraged in this newfound faith. Uh, be encouraged. Uh, and uh, we want to pray for those out there who may have a need of healing right now uh, as we come to the close of this broadcast. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we send your word to those who are sick and afflicted. They may be uh, in another nation. They may be in Afghanistan or India, or uh, in the African continent. They may be anywhere in Asia, in China, in Ukraine, or Russia, or Armenia, or here in the United States, or Haiti. Oh, Father, or Cuba, in the name of Jesus, I send your word, touch, heal, deliver in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen.
Amen. Well, Amen. Praise God. Well, Sister Michelle, thank you so much for coming on today. We are not normally on on Mondays, but it is uh, pow- it was powerful, and it is so wonderful to hear how God is moving around the world, how God is using you, and thank you for encouraging all of us in stepping out in faith and obeying God and ministering and going where God tells us to go. Thank you so much. We continue to pray for you and for the ministry that God has called you to do. And uh, may God richly bless you. And folks, remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Join me tomorrow morning again at 10 a.m. Pacific, and that will be at 1 p.m. East Coast time as we continue to pray for America. We continue to pray for the nations, and we need and we continue to pray for your needs. Before we close, I just want to pray for America. America needs revival. America needs a move of God. Sister Michelle, would you pray for America? Amen. Lord, we lift up America to you, Lord. There's so many people in chaos right now in America. There's a lot of confusion. There's spiritual confusion. There's a lot of depravity and darkness that has made great inroads into our culture. Lord, we just lift up America to you. We need you, Lord God. We've gone so far. I don't think it's even noticeable to some people because it's such a gradual slide, Lord. But if we would take stock of ourselves, if we would consider our ways, Lord, it would be good for each one of us, Lord, to examine our lives in light of your word and say, who am I? Where am I? Where's my God? Have I left him somewhere while I do my own thing? Lord, I lift up America to you, and I ask you for mercy upon this generation. This generation is lost and confused and alone, and so many of them don't have answers to their questions. So many of them are making a new God created in their own image. Lord God, we ask you for for mercy. We ask you for a gift of repentance to our nation. Lord God, we've turned our back on you. We've tried so hard to be independent, but you hate our rebellion and you hate our independence. Lord God, you've called us back to yourself. Lord, you've called us to bow our knee to your lordship and your authority. You've called us to know your name, the only name. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask you for mercy to America. I ask you for revival. And uh, there's a part of me that wants to say no matter what it takes, even though I know that that could take a lot because we're really stubborn and we're really hard-headed. But Lord God, your souls, the souls of your people are at stake. And whatever it takes, Lord God, that you would reach into each life, into each circumstance, each scenario, and you would draw people to yourself, that you would not just knock on their door, but bang it down if necessary so that they can hear your voice, so that they can see you, so that they can let you in, Lord. We're so used to being able to live our lives on our own terms. But I believe that those days have passed. And that now we got to walk by faith in the spirit or else there is no walk at all. Lord, any walking in our flesh is death. It's a death sentence, a physical death and a spiritual death. But if we'll, through the spirit, put to death the deeds of our flesh, we can live. So Lord God, in Jesus' name, we ask for mercy on America. We ask you for an opportunity for the people who've never heard to actually hear. And for those who've heard, maybe to hear it again in a new way where they can choose life because you're worthy of this, Lord. Eternity is, is, is now, Lord, and that we wouldn't spurn the opportunities that you give us to turn our hearts toward you and to, to respond to your call and to say, yes, Lord, yes, to you and to your will and to your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank you again, folks, for joining us today. Share this broadcast. Uh, Share it with your friends, your loved ones. And let's continue to pray for America. Let's continue to pray for the nations. 
and let's continue to stand in faith, believing despite circumstances, remembering that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Joining me tomorrow morning, I, uh, I believe Sister Marcy Labaki will be with me on tomorrow. Uh, Tony and Marge Abram should be on here on Wednesday, and Brother Albert on Thursday. And then Friday, we have the Spanish broadcast. So don't miss these broadcasts. God richly bless you. Share share, share.